Get started. Uh, hello everyone, thanks for coming to my session called Memory of Nations, how Drupal helps preserve memories of humankind. Uh, my name is Mira Michalička, I come from Slovakia where I'm uh, acting as technical director in Dr uh, Drupal and uh, marketing agency called uh, Made Digital. Uh, I have uh, over seven years of experience with Drupal and uh, in web development sector I'm more than 10 years. Uh, in this project I was acting as a project manager and solution architect. Uh, first let me tell you something about Memory of Nations. Uh, Memory of Nations uh, is the project called by NGO called Postbellum. Uh, Postbellum means after the war and uh, that kind of defines uh, what they are doing. Uh, it's the biggest database of oral testimonies in Europe and uh, they are focusing on people who witnessed uh, something during communism or nazism in 20th century. Uh, originally they started in uh, 2008 where they first launched their website and uh, uh, they were focused on uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, Czechia and Slovakia because uh, well it's Czech uh, NGO. Uh, but uh, well, 10 years passed and uh, they wanted to renew their uh, digital presence. Uh, the Postbellum is not running uh, the website on their own. Uh, they are uh, running it with the help of Czech Radio, which is the biggest uh, Drupal customer in Czechia. And uh, also uh, by, uh, with the help of Institute for Studies of Totalitarian Regimes. Uh, they also have many uh, foreign partners uh, in Europe or in the US, uh, for example, Terror House in uh, Hungary. Uh, so, as I said, uh, they are focused on uh, recording uh, these testimonies. Uh, so, everything is focused around uh, the witness as the person, and uh, then they try to arrange some meeting uh, with this person uh, because initially they just get uh, his name, surname, and uh, some mean of contact. So uh, they try to schedule meeting uh, with these people. Uh, they record uh, into the system. They record uh, the result of the meeting. Uh, so if the person agreed to have some recording with them, uh, or if it wasn't reachable, if uh, the person wasn't reachable at all, if the person uh, agrees to do some recording, then they. Uh, either visit him or, or at their home or uh, they invite this person to their offices. They have currently seven offices in uh, Czechia with, uh, equipped with uh, video equipment and uh, some audio recording devices. And they uh, do interviews with them, which can take up to four hours or maybe even whole day. Uh, this is called full recording and uh, then they do full transcript of this recording, so full transcript of these uh, four to eight hours. Uh, they cut also shorter clips uh, from this full recording, uh, which is like 30 seconds focused on one isolated topic. And these clips also has a transcript, and uh, in the end the most uh, valuable outcome uh, for them is witness story, which is uh, some uh, summary of the of this interview. Uh, they also collect some other um, data about this person, for example documents, uh, if there is something in uh, some national databases or uh, if some newspaper publishes article about these uh, people, then they also record this and uh, of course photographies. Uh, so, uh, as I said, they uh, reached to us uh, with these business goals. So the first one was uh, to launch before uh, 28th of October 2018, so uh, slightly more than a year ago. Um, the date was because it was uh, 100th anniversary of Czechoslovakian Republic, so uh, they wanted to celebrate this uh, date. Uh, they also wanted to um, go bigger in online so they wanted to launch a new publishing layer because uh, every uh, single entity uh, you can see here 
is strictly documentary, so it's written on a certain style and uh, it's not very interesting for most of the people. Uh, and uh, the last business goal was to go uh, into abroad, so uh, they want to support multiple translations. Uh, so let's, uh, let me tell you something more about the team. Uh, the team consisted from uh, the three groups, basically. Uh, there was customer who provided us with uh, their in-house uh, graphic designer and also with uh, front-end developer. Uh, they contracted front-end developer before they contracted us. And uh, the agreement with this front-end developer was uh, that uh, he will convert uh, provided graphic designs into HTML templates, but we later convinced them to uh, convert it into Pattern Lab so we can use it uh, more easier. Then uh, our agency, Made It Digital, provided uh, me as product manager and also uh, Drupal developers. And then there was a Czech Drupal community uh, who provided some uh, DevOps guys, uh, who provided uh, migration specialists, and uh, also psychologists, so we can uh, cry to someone. <laughs> Uh, let's start with the first business goal. So, uh, as I said, it was launched before uh, 28 October 2018. So, this was our idealistic timeline. Uh, we were first approached by uh, the Czech radio uh, guys uh, at some Drupal meetup in Prague uh, that they cooperate with this NGO and uh, they are looking for some partner to help them with migration. Uh, uh, Memory of Nations was uh, running on something completely custom, so it wasn't even Drupal. And uh, they wanted to move uh, to Drupal because uh, the Czech Radio recommended it as uh, the great tool for their needs. Uh, so we met with the customer uh, it, in mid-April. Uh, and uh, we thought, okay, it will take us a month to do some analysis and sign contract, and then we have uh, three, four months to uh, develop the solution and uh, do some testing and deployment in October. The reality looked a little bit different. Uh, yes, we first met in mid-April and uh, it was actually quite pleasant uh, meeting with the customer because we learned uh, a lot of uh, behind the screens. Uh, but they also said that, oh, analyzes are useless. We will tell you everything you might need to know. And they provided us with some, uh, some book they usually give to new editors, uh, then some uh, database tables and uh, ER diagrams uh, for the uh, legacy system. Um, so we said, OK, it seems pretty re reasonable. And uh, it was our first and biggest mistake. Uh, there was also some issue with contract because uh, of their relation with Czech Radio. They, are, they were waiting for the contract uh, for the radio. And radio provided some draft, but uh, it was uh, for much larger pro projects. So uh, there were some unreasonable stuff and uh, then uh, lawyers got involved. So it took us much more longer to sign the contract. So instead of uh, start working uh, in uh, mid-May, we started working almost beginning of July. So it gave us uh, not so much time to implement it. And uh, we were working Scrum style, so we had uh, uh, two week long sprints and uh, customer agreed to everything, so yay for us. We will be invoicing uh, hours we worked. Uh, but uh, there were also some deadlines on customer side because, as I said, they provided uh, with graphic designer, they provided front end developer. Uh, so uh, we agreed uh, that they will provide uh, out outcome of their work uh, after two sprints. So that's beginning of uh, August at latest. And uh, we will have one month to reason about the graphic design and then. September to implement it and launch in October. Uh, 
there were some issues, so it took them uh, several more months to deliver designs. Uh, they delivered it uh, one week before when they wanted to launch. So uh, it wasn't very doable, and uh, in the end uh, we did final migration during uh, Christmas and we launched uh, January 1st, 2019. Uh, then the second issue came up, uh, which was that they weren't testing the system at all. So it was quite shock for us because uh, they agreed everything, they uh, signed off uh, the work every sprint. So yeah, but in January, so we did some bug fixing from January till April. <laughs> but in April, everyone was uh, happy and they are quite happy about the outcomes now. Uh, after the launch, uh, we received uh, quite good feedback. Uh, I uh, signed up the, pro uh, the project to the case studies and uh, this was feedback from Paul Johnson. He found there uh, the, scout, the founder of Scout movement there, so uh, it was nice reading about uh, her. And uh, we also won uh, two Splash Awards, one was uh, international, and then we won also the uh, Czechoslovakian one, uh, which is on the right side. So uh, that's the whole team who worked on the project, uh, uh, from the left, uh, there's the migration specialist slash psychologist, then the DevOps guy, and uh, three developers, and then the, our liaison in the Czech radio. Uh, the second business goal was to launch a new publishing layer, uh, which uh, was probably more important for them uh, than they let us know. So. Uh, when they delivered us with designs, we started implementing designs, and then after a couple of days, uh, they said, oh, let at least publish this magazine layer. So uh, we have at least something on, the, on this anniversary. And uh, that's when the Czech community stepped up, and the guys from the Czech radio, because they implemented the whole thing within probably a week, and uh, it wasn't following very best practices, but it was working, it was publishable, and it made customer really, really happy. Uh, it also uh, helped to raise page visits quite significantly. A uh, year ago, they had about uh, 300 unique uh, page visits per day. Uh, now it's 3,000 per day. And uh, there was peak when they uh, started publishing into a uh, new aggregator and it was uh, 14,000 uh, unique visits per day. Uh, every visit uh, duration is about 10 minutes, so it's quite a long time. And the last uh, business goal was to enhance translation system. So the requirements were that uh, we want to support all 15 languages from the original system, and we want to uh, have easy way how to add new language. Uh, because as I said, they were focused in Europe, but uh, uh, recently they started to recording uh, Cuban dissidents, uh, they started to running some uh, projects in uh, Asia. Uh, and there were also some limitations uh, which didn't allow them to define more translation, more than one translation uh, for one piece of content. So that was also uh, something new. And then something uh, really strange was uh, defined fallbacks for every language. Uh, so as I said, the in the original system uh, they had uh, let's say, note in original language, they were able to add English translation. So they, for example, selected uh, Czech and then they were able to add only English. It was uh, also the single form. So when editor was working on that, uh, he had to scroll up and down 
uh, the page, so it wasn't uh, very convenient. And uh, there was also publishing workflow, uh, but not in Drupal sense of way that uh, you are going through some steps until you are allowed to publish, but uh, they had separate uh, workflows for every language. Uh, so from the requirements, uh, if you look on the first three, it's quite easy to achieve just with core. But the for, for the last one, uh, it means that uh, if you have check content, uh, uh, but you are visiting Slovak version of the website, then you will see the check content before the English one. Because Czech and Slovak are quite similar languages, so uh, you are not going to show uh, English if it's not necessary. And there is also the similar fall fallback for uh, Russian and Ukrainian. Uh, so uh, there are three custom modules, but uh, they are not working very, very good. Uh, in the end, we use language hierarchy module, uh, and it allows you to select uh, translation fallback language uh, for some language code, and then you can define uh, one fallback language uh, globally for whole system, which is usually the default language of the website. Uh, as, uh, it's not working uh, so good that uh, you don't need any tweaks. Uh, it's working only if you are using uh, entity view. So uh, if you are using views and fields, you need to do some custom coding. Uh, on the back background uh, is leveraging uh, these get fallback candidates function uh, and that way you are also able to implement uh, the situation for uh, fields and uh, in the views. Um, then after the launch and what we were basically doing for from January till April uh, was the last requirement which was allowed to define main language per domain and when the language in the language feature is changed, then translate only the main content. And only if you switch also the domain, then translate also the rest of the page. I will show you an example. Uh, this is page of Václav Havel, and this is Czech version of the website. So you see the menu and every content is in Czech. And uh, here in the sidebar, uh, there is uh, written that uh, this, this witness is also available in different language. So when I click this English, the menu and uh, taxonomies and uh, interface translation will stay in the domain language, but the content of this story will be translated and yeah, that's it. And only if you use this language switcher in the top, it will translate the menu and uh, because you are on different domain memory of nationals.eu. And again, if I press the check here, then everything will stay in English except the story. So this was quite a requirement. Uh, I try to explain it to Gabor Hochi to get some guidance how to achieve this. But uh, he wasn't able to help me. So uh, it was a couple of nights digging into the core. And uh, I figured out that uh, in the core you can define something called language types. Uh, that's uh, content interface and the core is shipped also with the URL. Uh, that's what you can configure. The URL is invisible, it's used only for generating the uh, links uh, through the code, but the content and interface, you can configure that uh, in the translation uh, page in the Drupal. Uh, for each of these language type, you can define language negotiator, which, uh, which is basically where uh, the 
language code comes from. So it can come uh, from the cookie or URL or uh, user configuration or whatever you want. Uh, so uh, I thought that, okay, let's create a new language type. That's actually possible to do using uh, hook language types info. Uh, you will just provide uh, the name and uh, that's it. So that was a little sus suspicious, but uh, I carried on. Then you can configure and create negotiators for this new language type because it actually appears on the translation page. And uh, the language negotiation is uh, just plugin, so uh, you do whatever you want. So uh, we get language called from the uh, based on URI, and uh, that was it. And uh, yeah, then expectation was that we will just profit from that. So uh, we found out that uh, you can create the language type, but you there is no mean how to use that language type because uh, it's hard coded in uh, entity base. Uh, class. So we did this lovely uh, hack which allows us to define that uh, okay if it is no then uh, if it's uh, not witnessed then please go ahead and uh, find out what uh, language, uh, what translation candidate you want to use uh, but uh, otherwise just please return now then uh, we defined uh, this array, uh, so for every domain we defined uh, language we wanted to use. And then we used language fallback candidates operation alter, uh, where we load uh, these domains. And uh, because the candidates array is now, because we skip, uh, 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 skip determination uh, in this page, then uh, load whatever uh, language is defined for the domain. And it's surprisingly working. Uh, it's not a nice way, but uh, yeah, it's working. Uh, so for, uh, for these business goals, uh, the first one we weren't able to achieve, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but at least there was this uh, magazine which uh, they are really happy about. Um, we were able to launch new publishing layer. As I said, the community stepped up, helped us with this task, and uh, now uh, we are just maintaining it and uh, we are really happy about it. And uh, we were also able to achieve uh, multiple translations, uh, which in the beginning seemed to be an easy task, but uh, it turned out to be the hardest one of all. Uh, and uh, Yes, uh, after we launched the pro project, uh, we had very mixed feelings, client had, had very mixed feelings. Uh, but now when we are looking uh, uh, at this point on this project, we are quite happy about it. We were able to warm one of these into our office. And uh, yeah. Uh, so that was all for my, for my presentation and uh, join us for the contribution on Thursday, either mentor contribution, first time uh, contributor workshop or general contribution. And uh, you can uh, give some feedback to Kwoni about whole group com. Thank you. Any questions? How many interviews do you have on the site? Uh, it's uh, 4,000 published witnesses and uh, another 4,000 unpublished because uh, for every witness they require some uh, uh, agreement with publishing and uh, you can either, as witness you can choose uh, that okay you can publish it everywhere or you can publish it only for the approved users, so uh, users can log in into this system and uh, after they pass through some verification that uh, it's a real person and uh, so on. 
Uh, or you can uh, pick something completely custom. I know that uh, Cuban dissidents pick that uh, their interviews can be published uh, freely after uh, the Castro regime ends on Cuba. Uh, we are waiting for CORE to do it for us. <laughs> uh, there is some initiative for CORE media uh, which should auto uh, transcript. Yep. Uh, did you run into any specific trouble with the migrating? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was from the custom system, so uh, it's not uh, very relevant to the current initiatives uh, in the core. Everything was, uh, I mean, uh, migrate plugins and uh, the ways how you are supposed to write uh, the migrations, everything worked as expected. What we weren't, weren't expecting was uh, that it might take so much time. You described some problems or troubles that comes from from the client. Are there any outcomes for you personally that uh, you will be like behave differently in the uh, like get getting the job or planning planning that something like main points that you will avoid in the next uh, next job? Or in yeah, we are definitely doing our analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Don't skip. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that's one takeaway, and the other uh, would be uh, I was able to compromise uh, here because I like the project, so uh, don't compromise, it will cost you a lot. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you for coming. Hello.